In this next video, we're going to get a little bit more practice finding the derivative using the four-step process, but I also want to take some time to focus on interpretations of the derivative, because that can be just as important as finding the derivative itself. So we have a small steel ball that is dropped from a tower. It will fall a distance of y feet in x seconds as given by the function f of x equals 16x squared. In part a, we want to find the average velocity from x equals 2 to x equals 3 seconds. Now when we talk about average velocity, another way that I can interpret that is just the average rate of change which is also the same thing as slope of the secant line. So for this first part, we're going to use that formula we used way back in the beginning of, uh, at the beginning of this section, f of b minus f of a divided by b minus a. So I'm going to take x equals 2 and x equals 3 and plug them into this formula. I'm going to find f of 2 and f of 3 first before I jump into that though. So let's find f of 2 first. Again, I'm plugging that into my function up here, 16x squared. So I have 16 times 2 squared, 16 times 4, which should give me, let me just double check, yep, 64. And then I'm going to do the same thing with x equals 3. So f of 3 equals 16 times 3 squared, 16 times 9 and that gives me 144. So in order to find my average velocity, I'm thinking about f of 3 minus f of 2 divided by 3 minus 2. So f of 3, we said that was 144, minus f of 2, there we had 64, divided by 3 minus 2, well, that's just 1. And if we simplify that numerator, we're left with 80 over 1, or 80. And we want to make sure that we include a unit here as well. We're talking about velocity. Our unit for distance, we said, was in feet. And our unit for time was in seconds. So our unit for velocity here would be 80 feet per second. So there's our answer for part A. That's something that we probably already knew how to do. Part B, though, here's where things get interesting. I want to find the instantaneous velocity at x equals 2. And again, when we see this word instantaneous, or even if we just see this word velocity, I want you to think about the derivative, f prime of x. So for part B, I need to find the derivative of my function. And then once I have that, I'll evaluate it at x equals 2. I'll take x equals 2 and plug it into my derivative. That will tell me the instantaneous velocity. So we have to use our four-step process here. Let's start with step 1. We want to find f of x plus h and simplify it. So 16 times x plus h quantity squared. Remember, exponents come first before multiplication in our order of operations. So 16 times x plus h times x plus h. I would highly recommend that you FOIL these two binomials out first. I'm going to multiply these two first before worrying about the 16. So I'm going to hold on to that 16 for right now. I'll distribute that in the next step. So if I FOIL those out, I'll have 16 times x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. And then when I distribute that through, I'll have 16x squared minus, excuse me, plus 32xh plus 16, oops, running out of room here, 16h squared. So there's step one. I can't do anything more with that, so let's go ahead and move on to step two, which in step two we want to subtract our original function. So f of x plus h minus f of x. So what we came up with last time was 16x squared plus 32xh plus 16h squared. 
and I want to subtract my original function, which if we scroll back up and take a look at it, we said that was 16x squared. So I'm going to subtract 16x squared. Here in this case, we don't really need parentheses, but I think it's a really good habit to just to keep doing even when we don't need it. So we remember to use it when we do need it. So we should have some terms cancel out. Here I see 16x squared minus 16x squared. Those two will cancel. And that leaves me with 32xh plus 16h squared. Nothing more I can do. So we'll move on to step number three. I'm going to take what I found last time, which was f of x plus h minus f of x. And I'm going to divide that by h. So 32xh plus 16h squared, divide that by h. In my numerator, I can factor out an h. And that will leave me with 32x plus 16h, all divided by h. And then we see that h in the numerator and denominator cancel. And I'm left with 32x plus 16h. My last step here then to find our derivative is to apply our limit. So take the limit as h approaches 0 of what we found in step 3, which was 32x plus 16h. So here in this problem, I'm going to just plug in 0 for h. I've been simplifying along the way, so this is a pretty straightforward limit to evaluate. 32x plus 16 times 0. 16 times 0 is 0. That drops off. And I'm left with 32x. That is my derivative, f prime of x. So there's the first part of my problem. I need to find the derivative, which we have. It is 32x. Now we wanted to know the instantaneous velocity at x equals 2 seconds. So the last thing I need to do with this problem is take x equals 2 and plug it into the derivative that I found uh, using this four-step process. So in order to find our instantaneous velocity, I'm going to take 2 and plug it into my derivative. f prime of 2 is equal to 32 times 2. Here in this case, 32 times 2 should give me 64. And I want to make sure that I include a unit here as well. Remember our unit last time was feet per second. That's going to be our unit here as well. So 64 feet per second. So the difference between these two numbers, what I found in part A and what I found in part B, part A is the average velocity. So this is the average velocity from x equals 2 to x equals 3 seconds. So I'm finding the average velocity over a time span. So over this one second interval, this is about how fast my, my ball was falling, is 80 feet per second. Part B, we wanted to find the instantaneous velocity. Here we're not talking about a an interval, we're saying at exactly two seconds, the ball was falling at a rate of 64 feet per second. So we're no longer talking about the average over an interval. Interval, We're talking about exactly how fast this object was moving at one specific point in time. You can think about that as the number that you might see on uh, your speedometer in your car as you're driving. That's an instantaneous velocity because that's telling you exactly how fast you're going at that one particular moment in time.